This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Welcome to the Research Talks podcast here again on a Friday with Alan Green here on Stockbox. And yet again, it's a sunny it's a sunny sky, Alan, but it's still chilly. I don't know what it's like in the UK, but it's still very chilly over here in the Netherlands. We had a really good start this morning, Mark. It was really bright, really beautiful. And then as the day's worn on, it's uh, clouded over. So we're now looking at cloud and I think it's going to start raining at about uh, 11 o'clock this morning. So oh, uh, lovely. And, and the forecast, frankly, for the rest of the weekend. And next week is pretty shocking. So, well, I will just mention uh, Stockbox. Of course, are going to be at Mines and Money next week. Mm. Uh, you might be there, depending on your schedule. So, look forward to seeing you if you are there, Alan. But um, we will be there uh, all all those two days, sort of interviewing different companies and, and generally covering the events. So, do please please keep an eye on uh, on our YouTube channels and Twitter for some of the latest things. And if anyone is heading down, do uh, do pop by and say hello. Should be a nice little event. Um, of, uh, of getting to know CEOs a bit more personally. It's more one-to-one kind of style from what I understand this one. So, yeah, I think it is, Mark. Uh, um, and I'll, I'm, I'm aiming to get there, hope, very much hope to. But uh, if I don't get to that, I will definitely see you at the UK Investor Show, which is in a few weeks. Indeed, only in a couple of weeks extra time. Indeed, yes. Yeah, um, yeah that's very true. Two weeks after that. Um, yeah, we do have uh, discount codes for both of those events. So do check out our Twitter feed if you want discount codes to uh, to get the investor pass there anyone but today we're going to talk about i mean last week we talked about some success stories didn't we of uh, mm. quarter one and looking at success stories for quarter two and two companies that we didn't mention who have had very good success just this week ondo insure tech and, uh, and vela technologies ondo yesterday being up over a hundred percent at one point on uh, a contract win there which you'll tell us all about alan but uh, yes yeah, some, some couple of good success stories aren't we to talk about today it's great. Uh, and I think the great thing with, with Ondo to start with is its absolute simplicity. It, it's such an easy to understand investment proposition. And I think and I think that's what that, that, that's why investors are coming on in droves. So um, j- just a bit of history. Of course, the shares uh, are Ondo, as we speak, they're currently trading at 12.2p. They're up again today after that big jump yesterday. Um, that, that, of course, gives the company a market cap of 8.3 million but you know frankly i think that's small fry in terms of where this company is going and its technology um just a bit of history uh march 21 last year spinnaker acquisitions you may remember, recall that name um reversed uh, reversed into leakbot limited uh, that's um that's of course the the the, uh, the actual name of the technology owned by on those tech um, became on on the Insuretech uh, PLC. Um, on the, of course, is the Japanese word for temp- uh, the Japanese word for temperature change. So that's very much uh, what uh, the Leapbot technology works on. So um, Leapbot is an IoT based Internet of Things based claim prevention system, which um, can reduce the cost of water claims by up to seventy percent. Now, now water claims represent by far the biggest. Uh, source of claims uh, in the industry, uh, representing some 17 billion over last year. So it's, absol- it's absolutely huge. Um, and for insurance companies, of course, it represents uh, a major headache. Um, and given that we are in a climate of global warning, with warming with water levels rising as they are, this is something that is only going to become, uh, only going to grow with time. So last year, um, Consumer Intelligence Research um, published commercial returns from uh, a survey it had undertaken, um, and it said that Leakbot technology uh, was actually twice as good as previously claimed. Um, and this goes back to June last year. So this is just kind of building the overall investment uh, picture or, or the, the background picture for investors. Um, so the uh, results are twice as good as previously claimed. At that stage, three countries were using Leapbot, um, and uh, the uh, the countries that were using Leapbot showed, on average, a 44% reduction in water damage claims. Which, in terms of uh, of the uh, of the uh, of payouts and the you know potential 
or payouts there, that's a huge saving. So any insurance company is going to sit up and take a look at that. Um, it also uh, concluded on, on average that LeakBot can save insurers one hundred and forty dollars um, uh, in annual uh, of, of uh, uh, cost claims per installation. So if you work that out over over each uh, over each each installation, that is a massive saving. It's it's actually a no brainer. So as this information came to light and the uh, the company started to uh, grow its investment uh, proposition. Of course, the company started signing up. Um, the the founder of the company, Craig Foster, uh, just a bit of background here, is formerly worked for Procter and Gamble, and then HomeServe. So, um, if like me, you get thousands of letters through from HomeServe, uh, 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 trying to sort of persuade you to to take out their insurance to insure your heating and plumbing systems. I, I do have insurance, by the way, but uh, we'll, we'll just put that to one side. Um, you realize just how effective uh, their marketing is. Um, and from HomeServe, um, Craig Foster and his team developed LeakBot from HomeServe Labs, which he then uh, spun out in its own right and took it and reversed, of course, as I said just now, um, uh, uh, into Spinnaker, Spinnaker acquisitions. Um, the LeakBot technology uh, became the Insurance Times Technology Champion of the Year when it was launched. Um, and quite simply, what it does, um, uh, the technology, um, it, uh, it, um, it, it connects to your home Wi-Fi system and it notifies you, the customer, via an app on your phone. And it then gives you the opportunity to access engineers uh, to network to find and fix the, the issue. So that's hugely important. And of course, um, you know, if you're away on holiday, you know, if you're, if you're traveling, you're away from the house and all of a sudden there's a leak. Um, instead of the house slowly filling up with water, you'll get a message straight away so the engineers can get out and fix it and hopefully use the neighbor's key or a member of the family to get it and sort it. So you can get some idea of the potential cost saving involved there. Um, and this is huge. It really is absolutely massive. And the insurance companies are now just waking up to this, this potential. Um, to date, <clears throat> on those working with 11 different carriers, these include Admiral Insurance, um, Direct Line Insurance, Hiscox, Mapfrey, and, and Top Danmark. Um, but really, what's uh, what's propelled the uh, share price uh, 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 this week um, is news that uh, it has formed a partnership with w WNS Holdings. This is an NYSE listed company, WNS has a market capitalization of $4 billion. So, you know, this is a big hitter. Uh, you know, most insurance companies are valued in the billions nowadays because uh, insurance companies are great investments and make a lot of money uh, for obvious reasons. Um, uh, but WNS runs claims operations for multiple household name insurers, both in Europe and, of course, primarily in the US. And in an interview recently, Craig Foster said that, you know, there is almost limitless potential in the US. It's absolutely huge for the company to get into. Um, so just a bit more about the board. Um, uh, I, I mentioned Craig Foster, of course. Uh, Mark Wood is the uh, non-exec chairman. Um, Mark Wood formerly worked for Barclays. He was a uh, former chief executive Prudential, AXA, and also founded uh, Paternoster uh, Insurance uh, 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 as well. So so that's uh, that, that's, that's, that's sort of, um, you know, very he, he's a very key person to bring in to oversee uh, the development of the business and the scaling up of the business. And of course, the uh, the relationships he brings to the team as well. Um, and there's a great non-executive team backing the group up uh, uh, to boot. So in terms of uh, uh, financial performance so far, in the last set of interims to August 31st, and we're due uh, the fully results in the not too distant future, Revenues grew by 55% to 1 million, uh, uh, 400,000 of that was recurring revenues, and that grew 59% from previously. The company um, is sitting on cash and cash equivalents of 1.87 million, that's up from previously also. Um, and uh, to date, or up to August 31st, they shipped 15,887 leak bot units. And Craig Foster said this: it was hugely exciting to be uh, delivering their first set of results as a, as a listed company. The company's on plan, doing what we said we'd do, um, and looking forward to the future. 
And, you know, already this year, the company signed up, uh, uh, signed up a contract with Sweden's largest non-life insurer, Landsfor Sarkringer. I think I pronounced that correctly. They've commenced the rollout. They've also won an additional contract with Top Danmark. I mentioned them, the uh, the biggest Danish uh, insurer. Um, and really, you know, the, the sky for this company uh, is, is the limit. Uh, you know, this is a, a huge marketplace. I've said um, the the uh, the uh, the costs for the insurance industry are huge, over seventeen billion dollars a year. And um, with these savings, if it's rolled out across every com- uh, company, particularly in the US as well, then I think the opportunities for Rondo are absolutely huge. And of course, that explains the share price jump yesterday. But um, really, it's I sense that with this technology and the relationship Rondo now has with insurance companies, we're still right at the start. I think we are still right at the start, Alan. And I think the Swedish one is Lanta Schaffrengard, but I only know that. I'm not a super expert in Swedish, but it's only because I interviewed Craig and that's what he said. Yeah. And that's how he said it. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> I should have looked that up. I should have looked up how to phonetically pronounce it. No, that that's before. fine. It's fine. But, but yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, a new-ish company really. And um, I think people perhaps still need to sort of hear about the company and, and understand the technology. It's very simple, though, when you get your – when you listen to some interviews and understand what product they've got and uh, insurance yeah. for, yeah. Uh, sorry, tech for insurance companies, I likened it to the black box of the, uh, you know, the, the, the car the insurance that, that um, young drivers were given a discount on their premium so that insurance companies mm. could use mm. that technology to um, yeah, mitigate the risk effectively to know how that person was driving and adjust their premium accordingly. And uh he said to me, Craig, in a recent interview, if we can crack the US market, that's a, that's a big, big win for us. And this is just the start of that that contract win yeah, announced yeah. yesterday with WNS um, that uh, that they've actually got into some big insurance companies there in the United States. So they are they are very much at the start, very, very much at the start of their journey. So uh, it's definitely one to watch. And I think, well, not investment advice, but um, a good buy, I would say, um, from from now onwards, really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think um, a company like this that, that brings such such a, a such a hugely important device to market and already has relationship um, relationships with the uh, with eleven carriers, eleven major insurers, um, and I think the relationship with WNS is particularly significant because WNS works with many mm. many different household insurance names. So so at a stroke. They're automatically introduced uh, to all these insurance companies, and the simple facts are um, there is a vast amount of evidence already. Um, you know, this is just on a really coming up to a year since the uh, well, d- d- just over a year since they since the RTO last March, um, and they've already got all these companies in the bag. They've already got this structure in place, and um, yeah, I think the growth opportunities are absolutely huge. Yeah, indeed. Well, thank you for that, Alan. So let's talk about the other company then, also a technology company, Vela Technologies. Yeah, well, investors will have noticed also that Vela exploded into life mm-hmm. yesterday, and uh, yeah, we, again, with good reason. Um, so if we look at the the, the Vela sh- uh, share price performance, um, it's, you know, the shares have had a fairly lackluster year. The year high is 0.43 pence, year low is 0.13 pence, um, and we're currently trading at uh, 0.19 pence. Uh, so, so very much closer year lows. Market capitalization of uh, just 2.7 million, um, which hugely undervalues what the company holds. Um, but it's often the way with investment companies, and T- Vela is an investor into long-term disruptive technology businesses um and it's it's its mission statement is to seek valuation anomalies in publicly listed companies and identify special situation companies uh, and opportunities emerging amongst the uh, unlisted or companies shortly to list so to that end vela publishes a quarterly investment update and uh, brings up uh, and brings uh, the markets up to speed on where its investments are on February the tenth, it announced its quarterly investment update. Um, over the that, over the previous quarter, it grew asset value by eight point three percent. That's a five hundred thirty two thousand pound gain to six point nine million, um, which obviously stands very much at odds with the two point seven million valuation. 
Um, and I'll break that down for you. Um, now, the company has uh, it has um, a number of investments, uh, well, t- 10 investments into listed companies. So there's a company called uh, TruSpine, uh, has 6 million shares, owns just over 5%. Uh, a company called iGrain, it owns just under 24 million shares. That's 28.8%. Rural Broadband, it has 1.2 million shares, 0.3%. Uh, North Coders, 316,666 shares, and also participated in a secondary placing recently, owns about 4.5% of that company. Guildcast, 675,000 shares, 0.7% of the company. Um, Encilica made another recent investment in the company, now owns 1.4%, that's just over 1.1 million shares. Um, MTA, MTI Wireless Edge, it owns a quarter of a million shares at 0.28% of the company. Uh, Canobo, of course, the uh, the cannabis company, it owns 1.3 million shares, just over 0.3% of the company. Um, FX Specialist Provider, founded by JP Thwaite. Um, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, cornerstone, it has 1.2%. Holding in the company, 595,000 shares. And also had a stake in Mode, uh, 0.6% in Mode. But of course, uh, Mode, of course, has gone to the wall. So um, what would have represented about 100, 100 or 1,000 uh, pounds in valuation at the time of the uh, of the uh, uh, quarterly statement, uh, you can now take that off. We then come to unlisted uh, entities. Uh, we have WeShop, um, with, where the company, which is Community Social Investment Limited, Company owns 71,000 shares, that's 1.3%. Eris Tech, a technology company, 143,000 shares, just over 1% again. And then it has an 8% economic interest in the drug AZD1656, which is, of course, the COVID-19 and diabetes drug. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's because, uh, of course, uh, we spoke about Sizzle Biotech last week, and Sizzle Biotech also has an interest in AZD16562. And you may recall that um, uh, Sizzle Biotech shares uh, rocketed on the news that, uh, well, rocketed, they certainly jumped on the news that they had struck a put option with uh, Conduit Pharmaceuticals. Now, Conduit Pharmaceuticals are shortly to list on the NASDAQ with Murphy Canyon Acquisition Corp, uh, Corp- Corporation. They're shortly to uh, merge in with that company and become a listed entity. Um, what Siddle Biotech did was pay 120000 for for um, a, 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 a premium for a put option uh, at a valuation of $2 million, but the shares could be worth as much as $3.2 million. Um, Vela Technologies have done exactly the same thing. Um, the, the Vela Technologies have paid a a val- they paid a premium of four hundred thousand, and the valuation they expect uh, will be some somewhere in the region of four million uh, on on the on the on the basis of the deal they struck. But of course, bear in mind it'll be shares in uh, the Nasdaq listed entity when that when that happens. Um, the shares could be worth an awful lot more than that. So, given that valuation in on February the tenth didn't take into account really any tangible valuation for St George's Capital. You can actually, in my opinion, add the potential of this put option into that mix right now. And that's why the shares popped up yesterday. But of course, um, bearing in mind that at the end of that quarterly investment update, the company had a cash balance of 864000 That was up slightly from previously. Um, none of this is reflected in the value of the company. So I think Vela Technologies is a hugely undervalued company. Um, obviously, it jumped on the news yesterday. But I think investors need to take a good look at this. If you go to the website, look at the investment page, all of those investments are broken down quite clearly. And it's a simple question of adding up the valuation of the shares and doing the math. And the math, in my opinion, puts this, uh, particularly with this put option, um, you know, we're, we're, we're potentially well ahead of the 6.9 million uh, valuation that was quoted in February last year. So 6.9 million valuation, add on the the value of whatever you might describe to the put option. I've already outlined that. Um, and that stands against a 2.7 million valuation as we speak right now. Okay, so potentially a three-packer there, Alan, from your uh, 
I think it's, I, I think there's potentially an awful lot more than that. Mm. But uh, I would urge investors to look at the uh, investment page on the website, look at the breakdown of each company. Um, the quarterly investment update is very detailed and it, it, it outlines the activities the company undertakes each quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you'll see from that that uh, there is, uh, that there is, well, that the company is fundamentally undervalued at every level. Well, thank you for that. So their modus operandi really is to invest in what they see as early stage operations unlisted, but also, of course, listed with the view for capital growth effectively um, and, and realization of value from those companies as they build on what they're working on. Exactly that. Mm. And if you look at the course of the investment update, for instance, uh, um, some show, uh, some shares in Encelica PLC, ENSI is the every code, were sold. Uh, prior to that, uh, but they then participated and bought more shares. So, so the the positions in the listed companies will change. But of course, investments are made. Uh, some shares are sold to to uh, to take to 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 take profits and to uh, add to the cash balance of the company. Mm-hmm. And that then, of course, enables the company to undertake stuff like put options. So it's paid out four hundred thousand pounds for that put option, um, and will acquire shares. Uh, with that merger of up to four million, so yeah, you know that's uh, hugely important and a huge game changer for the company. But despite the blip yesterday, uh, in my opinion, it's the, the the true value of this company isn't reflected in any way. Okay, well, thank you very much, Alan, for talking to us there about Vela Technologies and, of course, Ondo Insurtech, two tech-based companies to keep an eye on. So, thank you very much. For your time, hopefully we'll see you next week. But if not, I wish you a pleasant weekend and um, we'll catch up in a week's time. Thank you, Mark. Look forward to catching up next week. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stopboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.